Miami Vice pulls out all the stops to kick off its triumphant second season in grand style. Welcome to season two of Miami Vice Changed Everything, in which I look at all the ways the 1980s NBC series changed the face of television. Today we're looking at the two-part season two premiere, Prodigal Son, which was directed by Paul Michael Glazer, Starsky from Starsky and Hutch, and was written by Miami Vice's new executive story editor, Daniel Pine, who wrote a couple episodes in the first season under the pen name A.J. Edison. We've got a lot of ground to cover, so let's dive right in. Following a harrowing undercover assignment in Bogota, Tubbs and Crockett team up with the DEA to intercept a shipment of cocaine into Miami intended for a brutal drug family known as the Revias. After a messy but mostly successful mission, the DEA's celebratory party is raided by the Revias, and Gina is shot and critically injured. The Revias conduct the bulk of their business in New York, so Crockett and Tubbs, undercover as Burnett and Cooper, visit a local dealer named Newton Windsor Blade, claiming they're in possession of the 600 pounds of cocaine seized in the Revia bust, which they'd like to move outside of Miami. Newton, who hangs out on a yacht surrounded by bikini-clad women boogieing around to Billy Ocean's Caribbean Queen, suggests they contact a dealer in New York named Jimmy Borges. In what's probably Miami Vice's splashiest celebrity cameo to date, Newton Windsorblade is played by KISS frontman Gene Simmons. So Crockett and Tubbs head to New York where they check in with their grouchy local NYPD contact, Lieutenant Pearson, who's played by Charles S. Dutton, star of the 90s Fox series Rock, as well as films like Alien 3. After Pearson yells at them for a while, Crockett and Tubbs seek out Jimmy Borges, who is played by a baby-faced Penn Jillette, who is one half of famed magician duo Penn and Teller. The other half, Teller, will appear on a fourth season episode because, sooner or later, everyone shows up on Miami Vice. At a nightclub, Jimmy introduces them to a mobster named Frank Sacco, played by James Russo, whose film credits include Public Enemies, Donnie Brasco, and Django Unchained. Sacco is at the club with his girlfriend, Valerie Gordon, the NYPD detective and Tubbs's former flame, played by Pam Greer, who first appeared in last season's Rites of Passage. While dancing with Tubbs to the Neville Brothers' Tell It Like It Is and Many Rivers to Cross by Joe Cocker, Valerie explains that she's deeply undercover as part of an NYPD Vice assignment to bring down Sacco. Crockett leaves Tubbs and Valerie to their own devices and prowls the streets of New York in a sequence scourged to You Belong to the City, which was a big hit for Glenn Frey in 1985. You Belong to the City, which was written specifically for Miami Vice, is one of those songs that's inextricably linked to the series, much like Frey's Smuggler's Blues or Phil Collins's In the Air Tonight. Crockett ends up at another nightclub where he meets messed up party girl Margaret, played by Susan Hess, while U2's Pride in the Name of Love plays in the background. Later, he'll make out with Margaret in a taxi to the accompaniment of Do You Believe in Love by Huey Lewis in the News. As a personal aside, that taxi driver is played by comedian Ken Ober, best known for hosting MTV's Remote Control, who died much too young in 2009. I worked with Ken on the staff of a television show about 20 years ago, and he was just a really warm, friendly, great guy. I liked him a lot, and it was a nice surprise to see him pop up here. Following a one-night stand, Crockett wakes to find that Margaret, reckless bad girl that she is, has stolen his gun. Jimmy is reluctant to move the 600 pounds of cocaine for Crockett and Tubbs because he fears the wrath of the Revias. We meet two of the Revias, Esteban and Miguel. Esteban is played by our old friend Miguel Pinero, who played the recurring villain Calderon last season. Miguel is played by prolific Puerto Rican-born actor Luis Guzman, known for Boogie Nights, Traffic, and Narcos. To attract the undivided attention of the Revias, Crockett and Tubbs steal a buttload of cocaine from them and then blow up their warehouse. Which is crazy reckless and a strong contender for the stupidest thing to ever happen on a Miami Vice episode. There could be squatters in that warehouse and it's connected to another building and this is a public safety disaster waiting to happen. They could have brought down the entire block. Later on, they get yelled at by the New York DEA commander, played by Anthony Heald, who is famous for playing the slimy Dr. Chilton in Silence of the Lambs. Also in attendance is Miami's DEA commander, played by Life Goes On's Bill Smitrovic, who played a totally different DEA agent in the pilot episode. The DEA and the NYPD are horrified by how reckless Crockett and Tubbs have been on this assignment, as well they should be. I gather we're supposed to be Team Crockett and Tubbs on this one and feel like the NYPD is cramping their Take Charge Miami style, 
But honestly, I am team DEA all the way on this one. A whole lot of other stuff happens. Crockett gets his gun back from Margaret. Tubbs and Valerie argue a lot. Jimmy gets killed by a mob hitman who then tries to kill Crockett and Tubbs. And it turns out that Margaret is a corporate spy hired by Wall Street titan J.J. Johnston, the powerful and profoundly corrupt CEO of a major bank, to keep tabs on Crockett. Tubbs and Crockett visit Johnston, who is played by Julian Beck, artist, poet, and co-founder of New York's influential Living Theater. The resulting scene is magnificent. Johnston starts out by mocking the paltry amounts Crockett and Tubbs have in their bank accounts, then gets to the point. His bank loaned hundreds of millions of dollars to the Rivias to finance their cocaine enterprise. If they default on the loan by, say, getting arrested or killed, the bank will go under, so Johnston is dedicated to removing all obstacles from their path. He owns the NYPD, he owns the mob, and he ordered the hit on Crockett and Tubbs. Even removed from the usual Miami setting, this is one of those scenes that hits right at the core of what Miami Vice is all about. The corruption surrounding every aspect of the drug trade is so profound and so flagrant that nothing Crockett or Tubbs ever do will ever put a dent in it. Crockett and Tubbs meet with the Revias to sell back the stolen cocaine. The bust goes sour, but Valerie shows up to lend a hand, and a huge gunfight ensues. Miguel is shot and killed while Esteban tries to escape on a helicopter, which Crockett shoots down. Tubbs and Valerie, who have spent this entire episode arguing, reconcile, and have a bunch of artistically filmed sex to Phil Collins' Take Me Home. Crockett and Tubbs return to Miami, where they're greeted by a mostly recovered Gina before they're plunged right back into their usual hectic routines. I've already mentioned a lot of the songs used in this episode, but there are a lot more. I'm not going to get to all of them, but among the most notable are Lou Reed's Good Night Ladies and White Stuff by Fashion, both of which play while Crockett, Tubbs, and Jimmy try to line up prospective buyers, and Windswept by Brian Ferry, which plays while Crockett tangles with Margaret. Whew, this is an overstuffed episode. It's overstuffed with music, and it's overstuffed with guest stars. I haven't even mentioned the cameo appearance by the late Peter Allen, who is the former Mr. Liza Minnelli and the subject of the Broadway musical The Boy From Oz. It's also overstuffed with plot. A lot gets thrown at viewers in this one. Miami Vice is starting season two with a big chaotic bang, letting everyone know it should have your undivided attention. We're starting the season off with a great Four Flamingo episode. Next time, we've got Dirty Cops, Santa Rhea Curses, Eartha Kitt, and a hilariously pointless cameo from two-fifths of Duran Duran's original lineup. Yeah, I can't wait to discuss that one. Please join me then, and in the meantime, please hit subscribe or follow me on Twitter to keep on top of all things Miami Vice, and I will see you later. Have a great week. Goodbye.